Hey YouTube, it is King here. So we did mono black and mono green aggro. So obviously there's a few colors left. We don't talk about blue. Today we're going to be doing mono red and mono white. First we're going to be doing mono white. Mono white has been traditionally like the worst color in magic. And today we're going to try to make it happen. We're just going to jam our glorious anthems and hope they are good enough i took this deck list originally and it had a few more one drops and it had season hollow blade in the sideboard but honestly we are playing a lot of bad cards we're playing fairy guide mother and we're just hoping to like get there um this is a fine card but loyal pegasus can't even attack by itself so whew. Let's, uh, let's see what we can do. We, we did win our practice match. Uh, Gideon Black Blade is still a good magic card. I like the idea of once you get to the sideboard games, they bring in more removal. You bring in the Planeswalkers that don't die to their removal. Uh, you can also bring in their uh, Luris so that when turn 4 or 5 it comes around, you can play Luris, play a creature, and hopefully they're out of removal. But if not, you know, they kill Luris cool, you still have a creature that you brought back from the yard. So, um, you have Tide Taker for the... Uh, Reclamation decks and things like that, so it costs a little bit more, but Tunica says mono white anthem decks are pretty good. I am 3 against them with mono red and green. Yeah, honestly, I've never seen this on the ladder or anything like that. Um, I just was kind of like thinking, hey, we played mono green, mono black yesterday. Let's see what mono white's about, and people are actually playing this to pretty good success. So. Um, the first match was pretty good. Uh, just like yesterday, we're going to be doing three matches. Before I jump in, I would just like to say, please uh, subscribe, comment, like the video if you want more content like this. And if you have any suggestions for the um, channel, things you would like to do, series, things like that. I did a stipulation draft once and that went pretty well. Um, please let me know. I'm Open Years, uh, new content creator here. Um, but apart from that, I stream 7.30 to 10 p.m. most days. I think I'm going to be changing that a little bit. And then 7 to 11 p.m. on Saturdays and Sundays. But more to come on that. Let's dive on in. Mono White Aggro. So what do you usually play, uh, Tuna Kif? Is it, um, Mono Red, like, Cavalcade? Like, do you play the two-drop, uh, enchantment? Or is it just solid mono red aggro? Going first, it's just where we want to be. Um, this doesn't have like a big powerhouse. We only have a few though, so this is probably fine. It's pretty aggressive, it has a plan, play things. Tononoki, like the animal. Yeah. Um, because this can't attack on turn two. We're just going to play this first, because it actually can attack. Solid. So green, breeding pool. This is probably the most played land in all of Magic at the moment. So we're definitely playing the Pegasus. And we're going to play the Savior. We're really hoping to draw some sort of payoff card in the next few turns here. You play Mono Red, Embercleave, Mono Green, and Azorius Flyers. You know what? I said I would not play a blue deck, aggressive deck, because I felt like Mono Blue was unplayable, but if I slash white and do like Azorius Flyers, that is a possibility. Um, so here, let's just... Hmm. I think we slam... And play Serpent for one, play Knight for one. Uh, yeah, I played Mono Red uh, Ember Cleave in the last. Actually, I didn't play that in the last one. I played the one the, two weekends ago. I played that in the Star City um, Open to a pretty good finish. I was I was just outside of cash. That was kind of upsetting. Overall, I think people underestimate Mono Red in general. So 
so we're looking pretty good here. I'm trying to think of uh, what we're scared of. So far, he's just played, yeah, blue-green, so we might just be um, ramping to Ugin. And if that's the case, he should be long dead before before that comes down. Just going to turn everything sideways. We're going to play uh, Season Hollow Blade. Giving it plus two and plus one and flying an next turn is actually pretty good. I would like to draw a land, so if he ends up casting a Uro ever, <coughs> I can just kill it. That'd be nice. All depends on the daily arena quests. First you see him ranked. Day two dailies. Yeah, I also cannot wait for rotation. I feel like this standard environment has been very hit or miss, like I've been not very impressed by, um, hmm. I feel like he's got a shark. Uh, sorry, let me finish my thought there. I've been not impressed by Wizards of the Coast not aggressively banning some cards. Like, why would you not ban Reclamation, but you ban the other four mana, uh, mana enabler? That doesn't make any sense to me, like at all. If they banned Wreck, and they banned the card Aether Gust. The card Aether Gust, the instant, I would love standard. Yeah, just send it. I feel like he's going to be flashing in a Sharknado. I'm going to go full control here. It's an Ambusher. That is fine. We have some pluses that can happen here. Instant speed, right? Or is it a sorcery? That is a sorcery. So we're just going to let this happen, I think. And try to kill him in the air next turn. Hmm. So maybe we can make two things flying. So we can make like flying, flying, and attack next turn for more in the air, which means that I should play this. Okay, you're saying, uh, Wreck, you don't mind. I'd love to see Cat Oven gone. Unfortunately, that's through here for a while. Yeah, Cat Oven to me is like, it's a very strong 1-2 punch, and I understand what you're saying, how... I don't think Wreck is as bad as um, Fires of Invention. I do, I do agree that like it would, it would be okay, but I just don't understand why you would ban one four mana enchantment, basically doubler. I understand it doubles like every turn, like turn five you play ten mana, and Wreck you can kind of play ten mana, but you have to play it at instant speed. It's a little more confined. I, I do get that. Um, I don't know. I just feel like. Cat Oven isn't as as bad. It does limit cr cards like this, you know? He steals my Hollow Blade and it just kills it. Like, Clay in the Firstborn is, is a very strong magic card. Okay, so I want to get him dead. I want to be able to beat one Sharknado or him flashing this in. I'm not sure if I can beat two. So, he gets flying. Oh no, this cost two? Dang, I thought that cost one. Oh, good old mono white getting me. Negate. You got it, opponent. Going to combat. I'm fine discarding a card. I think I still just bash all, actually. He can flash in, block this. One, I can outrace wreck. Fires was tough to outrace. I mean, they both get to um, kind of do their thing. Like, they play Wreck, and then they have access to four mana immediately. Like, I understand it has to be an instant. That's kind of what I, I meant by I, I agree that Fires was a little bit worse. Because, you know, playing Fires and then Wrathing is just like... 
you know, they they played their four mana, and the next turn they have access to ten for free, basically. Um, it also kind of made... Um, I meant to save that. Oops. But, um... Gosh, I don't know how I win. He can make... He can put this in and block a flyer. So I need to... This costs, what, two mana to tap? Sorry, I need to thank you for a second. Oh my gosh. Ignore his concentrate. No, you know, it's it's fine. I'm not gonna blame you guys if I end up losing, it's no big deal. Plus, I've already misplayed like two or three times this game. Um, because I didn't really read the cards. Like I forgot that I forgot that this cost two mana for a sorcery. But it's all good. Oh, I can't I can't beat that card. We don't even have a land to draw uh, glory this anthem and try to win that way. Okay, so we're playing. It's a wreck deck for sure, right? Or no, it's just a uh, like a girl swile ramp deck. Exactly. If I ever drew a third land like on time, that definitely would have been over. So he's not playing red. I don't like Savior at all. Savior is meant for the red matchups. Um... We never drew third land, and we're on the uh, we're on the play here. Maybe like one savior is fine to make Loxodon better. He's definitely playing Uro, so this could be fine. But I don't want to die to the wolf again. I kind of like the idea as a fight as one. I think on the play. We're going to play it like this, and in the draw, we'll reevaluate. Yeah, 22 lands is what I play in my mono red aggro deck that's playing a similar game plan that you're playing a lot of one drops, you know, maybe a few two drops. But I think the mono red is more, um, it can't really win without third land, but this one, because it has locks it on, if you go like one drop, you know, one drop, one drop, and then the next turn, turn three, you don't have a third lamp, you play like one drop, locks it on. That's still really strong. And then I don't draw any lands, but it's fine. It's kind of like this, this game plan right here. So we're going to keep six, and I think we're actually going to be ditching the Season Hollow Blade. Because we're going to be going one drop, one drop, one drop, and the next turn, um, Venerd locks it on. Right? Or is it better to one drop, two drop, one drop locks it on? Does that work out? You have it out there. No, that's one short, isn't it? You'll have one open mana and three creatures. Yeah, that's one short. So I think it might be this. Sure. Yeah, 21 lands. The idea behind that is we're just more linear. So because we drew a land, I think I'm okay trading here. Because if it trades, I can still locks it on next turn. Or do I not trade because I can locks it on and make it bigger so it can't trade? This is gonna come down not next turn but the turn after. 
I think this is fine. He agrees not to trade. Um, that's pretty good. So don't have the card. Uh, yeah, he doesn't have it. I think he would have definitely done that one. Don't do it. Don't you do it. Okay. We're safe. We're solid. Things are happening. Now I have to draw any card to make it so Season Hollow Blade doesn't die. Him not playing white for Wrath or black for basically Wrath, the four mana exile all, is definitely good for us. Glorious Anthem off the top. <laughs> oh, it is, it is my lucky day. The bad thing is, if we play this, we can't. Uh, it's it's still worth it to just to slam. So I still think we just turn everything sideways. If he wants to trade, he can. Going to three, one of our creatures dies. Man, what's the next spec straw? Just another glorious anthem or guide, guide, guide mother maybe to make something flying. But uh, okay, okay. So rethinking here. That was fine. Do we want glass casket? I don't think we want black blade here. I think we have to get him dead. And because he's not playing Wraths, he's playing big fat creatures to block, like big five fives. I like the idea of getting them out of the way. Hmm. I think I kind of want to cut the last savior for like either citywide bust to make it so like we can set up he has multiple love trucks and he feels super safe and we just kill them or a Gideon black blade citywide bust it is actually maybe it's fight is one Sure. Let's just end it like that. Yeah, this is uh, kind of what we signed up for. Captain, I'm very, very good at calling cards that would just like win us the game when the games don't matter very much. I mean, I guess we are, you know, ranking up, but like during tournaments, land would have been on top. Calling it now. Ooh. Um, let's just go to attacks first. Have I been following Baldur's Gate 3? I assume that's a new game coming out. No, I haven't been. I haven't been uh, really delving too much into new games coming out. What's it about? Or like what genre is it? My turn. Interesting, interesting. That pause made me think that he has when it enters the battlefield. So if he counters this, I don't get this. Yeah, 
The pause made me think he had this, but I already played this, which means I would have been wasting the mana, and it's better to just kind of get that out of it, his hand anyway. Divinity, Original Sin, it's done as Dragon's turn based RPG. Sounds pretty sweet. Ooh, did he miss a land drop? He was in the play, right? I'm not just crazy. So slam this glorious anthem and see what happens. I bet he has uh, the four mana wolf. I mean, obviously he can't play it, but I'm just saying that Oh man, sabotage? Okay, okay. I don't know what made him pause so much there. Okay, top's definitely a land. Smash. Now, I wanna, whatever I draw doesn't matter. Playing Glorious Anthem, keeping it in hand to discard to Season Hollow Blade. Or, let's see if this resolves first. No? Okay, that's fine. So now we're going to be playing this. And if he plays like a big creature, we can tap it. So I might not attack with this. No, it's still worth it to slay them all. And then if I have to do it on my turn, I will. He's not playing two creatures. Uh, this can always tap the wolf. We're trying to get him dead. Um... Like, like, right meow. <laughs> We're not trying to play some sort of long game. Cost two. So, tapping this. He's gonna gain some life. We're gonna make... Oh, we can't make a 1-1? One, one. I shouldn't have played a land then. Okay, sure. That's better for me, I guess. It's like, I think this giant killer has done three damage so far, and if he's at six versus he's at three is a big deal. I can't just keep this in hand hoping he's going to play a 4-4 four, four wolf. Like, I get what you mean, but, you know, we just got to kind of trust the top of our deck, which hasn't done well, but he's also not had a wolf, so. Him passing the turn makes me really think he has a wolf, though. Come on, deck! That's because I forgot to say that we had Glorious Anthem on top, right? So he could flash in either wolf or that, um, whatever this is called, Brazen Borrower. If that's the case, I think I just attack with my flyers. Maybe and the Seasoned Hollow Blade. I mean, that seems like a free attack. I'm fine discarding this. Because I can 2 mana... Let me think here. I can 2 mana tap. And then have 3 mana here. This costs 4 to activate. So, if I want to make a 1-1. One, one, if I want to guarantee make a 1-1. One, one, then, I just send these 2. If I attack with Season Hollow Blade, he is much closer to dead, basically. So he plays the 4-4. Four, four. He blocks here. He's dead. He plays this. Blocks. Tries to block. It's, I think he's just dead. I, I don't know what his out could be. As long as we leave this back, I think he's dead. Gonna go to control mode here. What are you flashing in? Okay, so you're flashing in a 1-1 flyer. Hoping to be able to block, but you're not going to be able to block. You're going to gain one life. So you're going to block, gain one life, I'm going to discard. Okay, okay. So you're going to be at one. Uh, 
I think that was actually a pretty smart play from our opponent. I think it's the only way he lives. I'm starting to like this deck though, I'm not gonna lie. Like, it's so bad that, and so like all in. I feel like it's more all in than red, because I'm playing a bunch of like one mana one ones, and I just have to like somehow finagle in the last damage. There's no like, hey, I might just draw Embercleave and win. It's like, I have to scrape and just like claw my way to victory. These are my kind of decks. Um, I tap this. He can't flash this in. If he lets me go to combat. Yeah, just tap this now. He's gonna have to bounce this if he doesn't want to die. Gaining one life's not good enough. He's attacking for three. Go to combat. gonna be two man to bounce this. Let's go. One to know, one to know. Ah, man. Nothing quite like uh, white aggro. Pretty good so far. I've actually liked this personally more than the mono black, because the mono black was like this middle position where it was had tons of removal and played small creatures but then played that like three drop enchantment that was good with only like the dinosaur and it just felt like it didn't know what it wanted to be and i don't know i didn't like that this one knows exactly what it wants to be <laughs> okay two mana easy keep 20, how many lands are in this deck? 21. So we have 20 left in the deck. 50 cards. If we could miss one land drop and be fine. If we miss two, where it's an automatic loss. Because we're on the play, this is a mulligan, sadly. on the play. We just have to trust in the Season Hollow Blade. I don't know how the deck that I got this from was not playing four of this card. I think this is the reason to play white, personally. Have I considered Law Rune Enforcer? Is that the one mana, like, one, one pay one and tap? Okay, so this is... No, I can't lock it on. Sad face. Um, the reason it's not good is because the one we're currently playing can also kill things, I do believe. And I'm not sure if I want five of that effect. Four should be fine. Um, I think it, maybe it's a fifth fine of. Or five of, I should say. Like the fifth one. But I'm not sure if we want five of that effect. I'm honestly not even sure if we want four of that effect. Okay, you know how I called Glorious Anthem before to the top of our deck? Can I summon a land? Can I just, like, say land at the top of our deck? Can I just be a land? That's more, uh, probable, right? There's more lands. Ooh. Sure. No, I can't. I'm not allowed. <laughs> Captain, you shush you. <laughs> Combat. So, I think I just attack all face. Because Vraska doesn't kill anything anymore. 
and I just want to get them dead. Now he could block um, Season Hollow Blade, and that's the best block he could have. And I can't sacrifice Selfless Savior because I would sacrifice the damage, right? Yeah, we can't sacrifice because he could untap, have a kill spell, and kill Hollow Blade. And if we. Yeah, we can't. We can't sacrifice. I really want to. He may oven. True, but what is he gonna oven? The knight? He can't oven the savior, we sacrifice it. And if he pays. pays one mana to kill our knight, like, that is really bad, don't get me wrong, but it could be worse. Hey, look, this is the reason that Mono White's bad. How do we get through this card besides Guide Mother? Fairy. It's Fairy Guide Mother, right? Okay, at least it doesn't have double. Maybe we should attack the Planeswalker, but I feel like. I feel like Face was right. He's gonna be gaining a lot of life, though, and drawing a lot of cards, and. Ugh! I just would like another Glorious Anthem on top, maybe. I'm not even sure if that's good, but I want it. Okay, I get it. I get it. You're doing stuff. Glorious Anthem on the top. As long as we win, nothing else matters. Didn't even sacrifice your food to draw a card? That's like adding insult to injury. Uh, I don't think it's even good anymore. Okay. So he has one free blocker. I think I have to kill this now, sadly. This kills it. No reason to talk with Self Savior. And if that's the case, do I just go face? What is this? Minus three, kill something? Is there any... There's no, like, two mana, like, three powered flyers, right? In white? It's just two mana, two fire flyers? Oh, jeez. Are we playing anything in the main deck that can handle this going on? Oh, we have the, uh, we talked about it earlier. The one mana that can be paid for three to kill this, right? And then probably kill this too. That's probably our best draw on the deck. So, anytime he sacrifices something, that's going to another counter. So, attack all. Hear me out. Attack all. He blocks whatever. He blocks Savior on Ooze. We sacrifice Savior to whatever the giant thing blocked to save it. He takes a lot of damage. I mean, I don't know what else we're doing. Oh no, he has Cat as well. Brings Cat back, goes to 10. He's got three blockers, and then we have bad attacks. Sadly, we cannot attack. I forgot about the Cat. Stupid Cat. Who was, uh, who was saying in the chat we should ban Cat Oven? I 100% agree. <laughs> Terrible card. We're just going to slowly die. Slowly die to this. Tunicif. You're right. This is... This is terrible. Every time he sacks something, he draws a card and this gets bigger. 
which is so dead. But if he didn't have that, I think he was pretty much lethal. He needed another blocker and to gain life. Come on, I'm playing some one mana two ones. I'm playing some Savannah lines over here. Stop playing your mythic rare that draws cards. Yeah, I think I am going to go one more turn and I have no idea what we could draw and I'm probably going to concede. I guess it has to be that kill spell for this, like this turn. And even then it's probably too late. Very much so too, too late. The only thing that's not killing us is he doesn't have a double yet. But He's actually attacking now. He's so like so far ahead. <laughs> how did I how did I fix that last time? I drew the uh, the fight card and paid like eleven mana into it and then fought and then attacked for like twenty two trample. Yeah, if no one has checked out the mono green uh, <laughs> mono green aggro last uh, that I did yesterday, it's on YouTube. Um, that was a pretty crazy stalled board that we just absolutely like blew through when we drew the new uh, prey upon that you can dump mana into, and we had a giant stone cold serpent. It was pretty insane, actually. I'm not gonna lie. I'm pretty sure we did that, and our opponent like didn't know what to do, like just like deuced and left the match. Primal might. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, that card is ridiculous. It's still not my turn, right? I'm just making sure here. Because I was going to draw and concede, but our opponent's still doing things. Get it? It's a lot of it's a lot of game actions there, opponent. Oh, he was seeing if he had lethal. Yeah, because I didn't block. I guess he had lethal. I didn't really think about it. I wasn't gonna block. Who blocks? Okay. We have no. Artifact or enchant removal in any of our 75. That was an oversight on my part. I guess this could actually kill Evan, right? Math is for blockers. Yeah. Yeah. Savior is not good here. So we're bringing in pretty much everything. Um, man, maybe maybe we do this when we're on the draw and the deck goes slower. I don't think that we can realistically win a long game. So maybe we're just trying to steal a game and then... next game kind of go the bigger route hollow blades terrible in this matchup too oh man i guess it's only bad against cat like he has to have cat oh this is awful I don't know what to do, opponent. I'm doing this. <laughs> oh, man. Yes, yes. Math is for blockers. 
I don't I don't do the blocking. I do the attacking. I draw my creature sideways and hope for the best. If you turn your creature sideways, have at it. I have one devout degree I brought in, yeah. His Gilda Goose stone walls, my stone cold serpent. Okay, we are probably killing this goose. Oh man. He doesn't have black mana, maybe? Or maybe he has a swamp and he's waiting. Oh. oh. Yeah. I guess I should have attacked first, but. Your service. Also, I should have activated, but you know, I'm just making all the misplays. We're gonna win him. We're gonna win regardless. You gotta believe. I would say believe in the cleave, but we're not playing cleave. This is our second match, correct? Or is this our third match? I believe this is our second match. Battle. It's not really matter. Lyle, lava coil or two one. Okay, this is gonna die. He does not have access to black mana. <laughs> Do we just not care? I don't think so. If he if he plays. He could play the dragon next turn. I believe in you, friend. This prevents him from having black mana this turn, unless obviously he could draw it. Claim the firstborn, attack my Gideon, I guess. It's fine. That was a good hit. Okay. I could see myself attacking with him and then activating to exile something here, maybe. Or not. So it can be 5 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Might be stealing this one, folks. He was not ready for the Gideon. The Gideon's like so good out of the sideboard. I might run 4. I don't know. Oh no! That doesn't matter, though. Something. Actually, he can sacrifice to gain life. I've fought worse. It's pretty cute. Not gonna lie. Well, everything I just said is a lie. We can no longer break through. Ever. Oh, man.
Oh, I forgot to plus it. I meant to play that and plus it. I'm oh, sorry, I'm trying to think how we, how we get past this cat. Okay, that's good for us right there. That is very good for Another us. If we can ever get him to sack the cat, then that's fine. He's probably going to be playing the... I am here to aid in the assault. Um, Share in my light. He's probably going to be playing this, the wait, this next turn. I'm going to exile it. Or he draws a devil and plays that instead. I think we're done attacking here because the cat is infinite blockers. And we want to get this big so we can start exiling this oven. So we're just going to pass here and make a 1 1. This rider is not doing anything important. No reason to try to press an advantage we don't have. Well, this is on end step. We can no longer use this. So there's never going to be a period of time where we can cast this. And oven's tapped. Because he does it at our end step. Okay, well we found a target for this uh, casket here. Oh man, come on. I think we have to make a 1-1 one, one and chump block this rider, because we need this to keep going up. Which, in, he should kill this in response. You fight okay, okay. So now we're not just dead to his dragon, if he draws it. Oh no. Actually, does that do what I think it does? Yeah, it's indestructible. It doesn't do anything. Sweet. I'm game for that. Sure. Are you doing it again? It's indestructible. It doesn't lose any, anything. No defense. It doesn't lose the loyalty counters on my turn because it's indestructible it doesn't take damage so keep doing that i guess if he was like targeting me we would have been dead by now <laughs> So do I play this with the plan of tapping like this every turn and be dead to a dragon? Or do I plus one this and just accept that I'll be losing it in two turns? He's not drawing cards. Other creature. Lend you my strength. I'm thinking like if we're dead to the dragon, so be it. I'm not sure if keeping this in hand kind of hoping is a winning strategy. If we had one more mana and I could have played a one one, then I probably would have done that. So He's going to take this hit. He's not dying. It's okay. 
But now we have this to block this indefinitely. Looks like he has multiple cats going on. Okay, that was a good draw. So we guide mother this. We vigilance this. I believe in you, friend. If he sacrifices and puts this in, that actually can kill it. Yeah, I can't block. That's sad. I probably should have indestructible, but then he just blocks and sacks. Yeah, not gonna attack with that regardless. We're playing this, and then when he goes to combat, tapping this. Just the plan. I mean, I wasn't kidding that these are the kind of decks I enjoy where the wins are not free. I don't know how we win this. Probably involves drawing multiple of these. <laughs> Paying two mana to give two one flying. Oh man, I don't know if we can beat a double. He's gonna kill our guide mother, he's gonna kill our giant killer. He's gonna kill our Gideon. At least he's not gonna kill our Gideon this turn, is he? Maybe? In response, I'm just going to tap this. We need our removal spell for uh, Devil this turn. This is tough. This is a very tough matchup in general. I only can have so many caskets. Wait. Yeah, this is his turn. So it does not have indestructible. I don't think you're going to be doing it, Knight. Yeah. We're just going to go to next match. One and one. One and one. I do think that this deck is trying to prey on ramp strategies and control decks. It is not trying to play against Rakdos, which is the best deck against fellow creature decks. Clan the Firstborn is a beating. So, one and one. Last, last match here with Mono White Aggro. Um, maybe a Banishing Light Star Wars you can exile an oven if need be. I don't want a 3 mana answer. Paying 3 mana to exile an oven is not something I want to do. But I do like the idea of... having some sort of disenchant effect. The question is, do we do, do we do this so we can hit multiple like ovens and things like that? They like the flexibility. I don't really want to fight as one. Is there a two mana? I think there is. That's just creature. That does not work on devil. Sorry, YouTube. Um, I just feel like I, I just need some answer to... Like, I need some sort of, like, enchantment artifact removal somehow. So there's Banishing Light. Which should also be good against, like, big green creatures. Um, let me just type in... Artifact. 
Let's see what artifact removal we have. So we actually do have disenchant. And then nothing else is that good. Yeesh. Exile or artifact or enchantment. So this would actually exile. Hmm. If we're going to be going big here, I'll be I'll be redoing this. I'll be redoing this deck a little later. I like the deck. If we're going to be playing a lot of three drops in our sideboard, like more than just a few Gideon, I want to play maybe a land in the sideboard or go up to 22 lands. I don't think I can justify having removal that costs three that isn't like citywide bust. We're like against mono green. <clears throat> Sorry. If you resolve this card, you just like wipe their board. But uh You can destroy oven and stone. Yeah, this is a card I was looking at too, but the thing is it's still three mana kill one thing. I think with the amount of lands I have I want two mana kill one thing. So, sorry, doing a little bit of deck change there. We're going to go to our last match. Oh, yes. I forgot that was a card. So, take out Devout Decree, Disenchant. And I didn't actually like Lurus that much. And bring in the four mana enchantment. Conclave Tribunal. This hits anything, right? Yeah. I'm about that. Okay, so. Very, uh, thank you very much. Um, Tunikiv, I appreciate that. We are going to go to our match number three here. See how it goes. Yeah, Convoke is a very, very strong mechanic. I think that playing a bunch of, uh, you know, one mana, one ones in white <clears throat> leads to Convoke being good. Solid hand. We're going to lead on Ginger Brute. Anyone who tells you not to play four of these is mistaken. Ooh. Mono green. Go to combat first. We're, uh, we're ranking up to Mythic. Like, it surprised me how competitive these mono-colored aggro decks are. We're definitely winning more than we're losing. This was a mistake, because I don't think he realizes that I can block and then do this. I don't know if he thought about it. So we can play Guide Mother and Loxodon, leaving up a discard for Seasoned next turn after playing Glorious Anthem. Wow, this is a, this is a start. All of his removal is damage based. <laughs> uh. Yeah. I mean, it's not over. We are taking damage here. So I need to... Oh, man. I don't think that's good enough. That's not good enough. That's just fodder to be discarded. So, cannot be blocked. Go to combat, bash. Yep. And now, as he doesn't play something with haste, Ginger Brute kills him. Going to game two. 
Okay, um, this is where bus comes in. We're on the draw here. I don't think Gideon is good here because it's going to be attacked a lot. I like our flyers. I don't think a random one two, or two one is going to be good on the ground. The question is, do we bring in ga or casket because he's going to have what does he have at three that's big? Hmm. I think we're just bringing all of our removal when we're on the draw. Like, just bringing all of it. And then Serpent's not very good because he plays... Oh, man. Actually, this might be a trap. Because he plays... Uh... He plays that... Um... The 4-drop that can cost 3 comes down, destroys a artifact or enchantment. And if that's the case, maybe we just do this. There's a chance we even cut. Oh, man. This is not good. Yeah, Gem Razor seems like an actual, like, beating. Maybe we just can't beat it, so we don't plan to. Huh. Let's try it like this. Going to game two against Mono Green. This is just two aggressive decks passing in the night. We're on the draw. We have land, one drop. Next turn, miss a land drop, probably lose. But if we go land, season hollow blade. Next turn, one drop. Loxodon is a very strong start. So we have two draws for one land. And if we mulligan, doesn't get much better. On the draw, it's hard for us to win anyway. I'm keeping this. This is a very aggressive keep, and we could easily be going to game three, but I feel like we have to get lucky anyway on the draw. Yeah. On the play, easy mulligan, but... Got there... That's the mono red way of thinking. 100%. 100%. So we're gonna go. We're gonna go. Uh, we're gonna draw a land because we're awesome. And then we're gonna go one drop, one drop, locks it on. I'm calling it now. Season Hollow Blade stone walls these, which is pretty sweet. That's not land. So, the question is, do we attack? I don't think we do because he has three cards. We have more. We just kind of want to play our stuff, play our Loxodons. And if that's the case, I think I just go Pegasus, save your pass, because Jujurut has haste. No reach, right? That has reach. Yeah, no attacks. Season Hollow Blade is going to be holding down the fort here. I was gonna, I was gonna find it eventually. I was going over. This card has like obscure text up the wazoo. It's not like Questing Beast where it's like uh, three paragraphs, but it's quite a bit. Oozes a card. Luckily, his entire board is stonewalled by Season Hollow Blade. Yeah. 
Okay, okay. You have my interest. I think we're tapping everything except for Hollow Blade here. That way we can keep up the defense while buffing our board, and we're probably going to do the same thing next turn. Just kind of like keep the defense, keep the defense, kill him. If we have to discard a card, we're probably going to discard a Glorious Anthem because we're never going to draw land because that's what, that's what we do. We can win off two lands. Look at our board. Look at our board. Well, what are you fighting? We can't let that happen, sadly. Are you sure? You sure? Okay, so... One, two... Three, four. Can I afford to tap my Loxodon? I think I can. He's not killing me in one hit. I mean, he's gonna kill me in one hit after I tap it, but. YOLO! <laughs> haste here? No. What has reach? Just this. It's just this, right? I think we can get through this. He's going to be able to gain a bunch of life with ooze, but if he's tapping mana to put a 1 1 counter on his ooze, I would pay. I would just love it. Now, what I don't want him to do is drop a land and drop. Man, what's what are we scared of? Questing Beast? Questing Beast isn't even that bad. I don't know what we're scared of, honestly. Um, Gem Razor does nothing. Maybe that's why we weren't supposed to draw land, because, you know. Oh, it kills Ginger Brute. Sure. A third land does so much for us here. And that has reach. <laughs> We're not going to not play it because we can activate it next turn if something crazy else happens or another random one drop. And this is the only thing keeping his fort down. It's all about, like, is he going to drop his fourth land? Okay, he is. Yeah, quest piece. You got it.
Hold on, hold on. If we draw a land, we can Glorious Anthem and block that for free. Well, discard a card, but pretty much block it for free. I think we're taking one hit here. Or are we trying to race this? I think we're trying to race this because this is only Reacher in the air. This is not a Reach, right? We're trading. We're tapping this and we're getting in and we're killing him in like two, two to three turns. Um, that was kind of a bad tap there. I just got really aggressive. Trample. I should have done it on his end step probably. And got in. No, this is fine. This this forces the issue. He needs to have something right now. Attacking is not going to kill me. He needs to have something now. He only can gain. Actually, he can gain quite a bit of life with ooze, but. I think we're okay here. I think we're okay. Some scrappy games here with mono white aggro, that's for sure. Playing fairy guide mothers and friends. I think our opponent is just like brutally ashamed to be losing so badly to Mono White. They're just roping us. Let me turn this cat to white before we win. Gem Razor, huh? So it gives you an additional blocker. So you can gain more life. And you have an additional blocker, so my turn. <sighs> we are going to pass. He's going to gain, how much life is he gaining here? So one, two, puts him to six. Four, it puts him to, man, that's a lot. I'm just thinking of like tapping this on his turn, tapping this, and then he just gains a bunch of life, we still kill him, because he's gonna have two things tapped and we just attack all. I think we can still do that, but I still think we just do this. I don't think he can attack at any point anytime soon. And this is just a better line. This this is the line that's saying you can gain your life, you can make your gem razor slash scavenge news, you know, an eleven eleven, it doesn't matter. I do believe, someone quote me here, I do believe we have citywide bust in our deck. Third land or citywide bust, what are we going to get first? Third land it is. Now, we're just going to slam this. I do, yeah, I think so. It doesn't really help, does it? He has one, two, three, four, five, six. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two, three, four, five, six. So two get through. It does make him scared of counterattack. 
Well, at some point, I just want to start tapping stuff down. Like, I can turn, tap something on his turn, tap it on my turn, and just kill him. I think that... I think we do play one. I think we do play one. And the plan is... Pass the turn, tap something. Hopefully we can play a one drop. Um, draw a one drop would be nice. He can eat a few more things, but I'm not sure if that really is relevant. We've got a nice little white cat here from season one. Yeah, citywide bust would just be like pristine. Oh, come on, opponent. Okay, just throwing this out there, it's definitely correct to kill Giant Killer. Our opponent is not realizing that our random 6-6 six -six is not relevant right now. He should be killing our Flyers, or we should be killing our Giant Killer. But we do have a savior here, and we are going to be saving our larger creature. I do, yeah. Makes this a big attack here is um, not good. But citywide bust would be. Whoa. Bring it on. My turn. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. Tanuki. Oh. So, destroy all creatures with toughness four or greater. So, that is all of his, but one. And we're going to keep this, 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 and this, and kill him. That is a great way to finish Mono White Aggro. What did we finish? Two and one? Wow. That is so much better than I thought. Like, it, it got destroyed by Rakdos. Wasn't close. But I, I think Mono Green is, like, the best aggressive deck right now. And Mono White's like, nah, you have your 4-4, four four, we have our 6-6. Six six. Like, it was outclassing it. And then it had more evasion. That could be a thing. So this has been a long YouTube video. Uh, we're going to end the YouTube video here. I'm going to end it as I always do. Please comment, subscribe, like if you would like to see more things like this. That citywide bust was ridiculous. So one of them in the sideboard came in very clutch there. The reason it's here is because of mono green. So I'm going to quickly switch to this screen here. So let everyone know that, for the most part, I stream from 7.30 to 10 p.m. This is up for change, but you should be able to find that me around that time. Saturdays and Sundays from 7 to 11. I generally stream a little before then as well, mountain time, as always. I do have a Twitter, I do have a YouTube, please check it out. Um, and I stream on Twitch. So that's going to be it for this. Um, please be looking for my other content. I am going to be playing Mono Red next. Uh, I believe we have time to do that today or tonight. Uh, we already did Mono Green, Mono Black, and YouTube. Take it easy.